Mumbo Jumbo is not gibberish. The ironclad warship was invented in 1592. At the age of 92, she sprouts teeth. Can you imagine that? <laughs> well, my friends, this is the first of a whole series of little visits we're going to have together during the next few weeks. That is, if you will allow us the pleasure of coming into your homes and chatting with you every now and then. This is Lindsay McCary talking to you, and my little playmates and I think we've dug up quite a spectacular array of little-known facts and fancies. Uh, some of them not so fancy, but nonetheless amazing. And they're all facts. Yes, indeed. Every one of the statements and dramatizations you're about to hear are, according to all available sources, absolutely true. So, if you'll make yourselves comfortable, we'll be back in a trice. Here we are, and our first scene is in the corridor of the General Hospital in Knoxville, Tennessee, April 14, 1938. A couple of nurses are standing by the call board talking to an intern when... Now, who's that? Oh, it's 392. Oh, that's Aunt Mary. Poor old soul. She's so patient. That fall she had about four years ago just about laid her up permanently. Well, I'll go see what she wants. Say, Lester, when did 364 have his last hypo? Uh, just ten minutes ago. I haven't... Dr. Holmes! What? Well, I wonder what's happened to Aunt Mary. Come on, Leslie, we may need help. Doctor, Aunt Mary is teething. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, now, uh, don't you laugh now, young man. Yes, it's true, I I'm teething. Uh, look, she here? Well, I'll be... It is true. She's sprouting a new tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, old Aunt Mary Rule, 92 years old, was sprouting a new set of teeth. The doctors explained that although it didn't happen very often, such a situation generally was caused by a failure to replace baby teeth in childhood. Can you imagine that? I'll bet there won't be any water under her bridges, hmm? <laughs> Say, I just happen to think. We think our navies are pretty smart. We look at those leviathans of war steaming past, and we marvel at those almost impregnable hulls of steel. But you know, we're not so clever... No, sir, 400 years ago, the Koreans... Oh, but I'm getting ahead of my story here. In the 16th century, Korea was under the control of China. As usual, Japan was looking with envious eyes on anything controlled by her ancient rival and suddenly invaded the little peninsular country with 300,000 men. Well, China came to the rescue, and during one of the many bloody naval battles, the commander of the Korean Navy, Yi Soon Sin, was standing on the deck of his flagship. What was that? Lee Tan, what is that sound? I do not know. It is not thunder. Fool, I know it is not thunder. Look, there is smoke coming from that Japanese ship. Ah, Excellency, one of our ships is sinking, and these ships of Japan is no way near it. I know. I know what they are doing. In a recent battle on land, the Japanese have used strange weapons that shoot small balls of metal into the hearts of our soldiers. Now they are using larger weapons of the same kind to sink our ships. Lee Tan! Excellency! Give the command to turn about and return to port. Our ships are faster than those of Japan. We can escape them this time. But we will come back. We will come back! 
And come back he did. Yes, sir, some time later, Yi Soon Sin, commanding a new ship built to his order, sailed into the midst of the Japanese Navy. Now we shall see. The leading ship of Japan is coming nearer. Soon they will shoot their balls of iron toward us. Then we shall know. Now! Out of my father! Let me look! <laughs> we are safe! The ball of iron has only dented our hull! <laughs> Lee Chan, give the command to sail full speed into the center of the Japanese! We will win this battle for Korea! Yes, sir, they did win, too, because Yi Soon Sin had built himself a boat with a wooden hull, but plated on the outside with sheets of iron. And the cannonballs of the Japanese had little effect. Can you imagine that? During that six year bloody war, the Japanese used firearms for the first time against a foreign enemy, and Yi Soon Sin invented the first ironclad warship. Say, uh, what's that big African native doing? Why, he's just giving utterance to a little mumbo-jumbo. And that's where you're wrong. That's gibberish, or jargon. Many people think that that's the meaning of mumbo-jumbo, but it isn't. Well, Lindsay, what is mumbo-jumbo? Originally, it was a little tuft, or pom-pom, worn on the hats of the men of some of the Negro tribes of the western Sudan. And they wore their mumbo-jumbos to frighten their women and keep them under firm discipline. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Well, here's another little tidbit we dug out of the past. On January 3rd, 1912, Charlie Powers, a clerk in the city of Stockton, California, decided to have himself a time in the big city of San Francisco. Consequently, he spruced himself up, had his hair cut, donned his new shepherd's plaid suit, red tie, and brown shoes with the pearl buttons, and headed for the bay city aboard the old steamer, Pride of the River. There, he curled himself up on a berth. But, alas, he forgot to lock the door of his cabin. As the boat was docking, Charlie awakened. Oh, my clothes. My new suit. My new shoes. Oh! Hey, there's somebody. Stop the boat. I've been robbed. I've been robbed. My clothes. Oh, look, look at that train. Say, Albert, he's a stowaway. Hey, what's going on here? It's that man purser. He's a stowaway. Oh, a stowaway. No, huh? no, I'm no stowaway. Somebody stole my clothes. Oh, yeah? Likely yarn, fella. Come on, come on. Off the boat with you and quick. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm no stowaway. It's my boat, <laughs> Poor Charlie Powers. His clothes appropriated, he found himself with an old pair of badly worn brogans and the rags of a knight of the road. Nothing more. And in the pockets of his stolen suit was all the money he had saved for his holiday. So he made his slow, sorrowful way to the freight yards to catch a ride on the rods. Hey, where are you heading, Bo? Stockton. Me too. Come on, here's a string going out in about ten minutes. Come on, Bo, here's a couple of nice clean rods. Okay. Say, so how do you... Hey! Jumping catfish, what's eating you? My clothes! That bum's got my clothes! Hey, clothes. hey, what you doing, bud? Lay off of me, will You're you? the one that stole my clothes! Give them to me! Ah, Gran, you're daffy! All right, then, I'll take them off of you! Okay. Give me those clothes! You're going to take them! Out of the crowd that quickly gathered stole the strapping San Francisco policeman. Separating the combatants, he escorted them to the city Bastille, where Charlie Powers retrieved his clothes and some of his money. Wending his homeward way, remarked Charlie with admirable philosophy. Never again. Stockton's good enough for me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? One of the most interesting and enjoyable phases of this series of Can You Imagine That is going to be the revelation of some odd facts concerning some of your favorite musical numbers. Here's the first one. I'm going to ask our quartet to give you about eight measures of our grand old hymn, In the Garden. As you hear the melody, see whether or not you can associate it with an extremely popular number composed almost 35 years ago. I come to the garden alone. I come to the garden alone. Could you hear the similarity in that hymn to an old popular ballad? Well, those eight bars are identical to the first eight bars of... Oh, but wait a minute. Listen to this. They called her frivolous hand, a peculiar sort of a girl. 
Yes, friends, it's My Gal Sal, written by Paul Dresser. And poor, big-hearted Paul never lived to know the tremendous enthusiasm with which his last song was later greeted. He was sure it would be fully as successful as his great song, On the Banks of the Wabash, Far Away. But he had loaned so much money to former friends and associates in show business that he couldn't afford to push it, and he died without sharing in its ultimate great popularity. On the front cover of the original song copy, by the way, is a picture of a very attractive young lady. The young lady who first sang My Gal Sal. A young lady whom Dresser so respected that he allowed her to use his name as a stage name. Have you guessed who she was? Yes, it was the famous actress Louise Dresser. Can you imagine that? That was mellow and all around good fellow was my old pal. Your troubles, sorrows, and care, she was always willing to share. A wild sort of devil, but dead on the level was my gal. I hope you've enjoyed our first session of Can You Imagine That? And uh, you'll be back the next time we're around to visit you on this same station, won't you? We all hope so. Yes, indeed. And until then, this is Lindsay McCarry bidding you goodbye, which is really just an abbreviation of the warmer farewell, God be with you. <laughs>